And we are live. Everybody, welcome to the MMA UK Ladies Show. I am joined by Katie Hunter and Jack Shore. Guys, say hello. Hi. Hello, hello. How uh, How is everybody doing on this uh, fine Thursday, the day after Halloween? It's a big deal over here in the States. I don't know how it is for you guys. Did you dress up, Jack? No, no, I spent it in the gym like uh, like every other night and uh, and watch all my family eat all the uh, the sweets and chocolate that I can have. But uh, no, it was it was alright. I watched a scary film though, so if you want to count that, I suppose that's that's one way of settling it. But um, no, other than that, it was just a normal normal Wednesday night. <laughs> what what'd you watch? Uh, the old Halloween film. The yeah, original. The, the original, yeah. I watched the new one on the weekend, so I thought uh, let's watch the original. Oh, you watched the the newest one that just came out. Yeah, yeah. How was it? It was good. It was good. I, I watched that on the weekend, and then I watched the original one last night. But I enjoyed the new one. They, uh, it was similar to the old one, so I, I quite enjoy them, you know, the slashes. So it, it was enjoyable, better than some of the more recent ones they've done. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the Halloween series. Uh, I even love the one. Actually, I know I don't love both of them, but I really enjoy the first one directed by Rob Zombie that he did out of his series. The second one was a little hokey, but the first one was really uh, wild. Katie, have you seen them? I have not. I'm not really into horror. I feel I feel like I'm really letting you down, Kerry. I, <laughs> I don't watch horror films. <laughs> I am an avid horror film watcher. Uh, I, I, since I was a kid, I even watch ones that come out of the uh, out of Europe a lot. Um, I think one was, oh, what the heck? I can't remember the name of it. Uh, hey, not Hey, well, I'll think of the name of it later on. I just saw it the other day, and I was like, oh my gosh, it was so creepy. It was awesome. But uh, guys, we got a fight week this weekend. Uh, Jack, I'd love to discuss your upcoming fights and uh, talk about your career a little bit before we get into that, because I know you have another interview later on. So let's let's break that down. What do you have going on, Jack? Uh, so I'm fighting Mike Jack and Dale for the Cage Warriors World Title on December the eighth. Uh, it's Cage Warriors 100, uh, the biggest card they've ever done. The fight card they, they released this week is stacked, and I think they're adding more fights as well. So for it to be in Wales is a big deal for me, and uh, I'm looking forward to the night. You know, main event, massive domestic fight, two undefeated guys, uh, rank one and two, I believe, in the in the, the British ranking. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be quite a fight. Jack, I have to break it to you that Mike Ekendayo is a, a friend of mine. So this I know is the I one and only that. occasion. <laughs> I know <laughs> Becky have uh, Becky have, have told me that uh, that you're that you're on Team Airlines, but uh, I'm sure you'll be a fan afterwards. Don't worry about that. I did um, I did have a little T-shirt made up. Um, tonight, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't arrive in time. But are you are you I'm going to the show? So I'm so, so, so excited for this fight because the two of them, <gasps> like, it's Sorry the best that. show that they could possibly put on between the two best guys. I think for both of you, it will be your toughest fight for, for both of you ever. And for the fans, it's just going to be a complete spectacle. The whole card is amazingly stacked. So I'm just so excited about every single fight. And then to, to end with that, it's just going to be incredible. Yeah, no doubt. It's um, it's the the fans are definitely have their money's worth. I mean, our fight alone, I think, would would sell the tickets. It's um, yeah. you know, a lot of people have been calling for that fight online. I actually called for it in the, in uh, September, um, because they couldn't get me opponent. I asked to fight Mike then, but he wasn't available. I'm not sure if he was injured or or, or something like that. But um, it's a fight I've I've been looking forward to, you know. And um, when I win, I'll be sure to uh, to bring you a Jack Show on Fire T-shirt, and you can take that home with you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to be a Jack Shaw avid fan as soon as the fight's over, I promise you. Um, <laughs> you know, I just want to see a great fight on the night. I'm sure we'll deliver for you. Uh, uh, I'm this sure fight, you, you know, the, as stacked as the card is, I think this one got our fight the night written all over it. Me too, definitely. I'll give that a third. I agree with it. <laughs> I think it's going to be a great fight. I mean, it looks like a great car. You couldn't, I mean, I kind of believe everything happens for a reason. I always have. So for me, I feel like maybe that uh, you're not getting the fight like to this. So, which is, you know, the hundredth show, the, their hundredth card is going to be like Katie said, it's, it's supposed to be amazing. So like, you know, silver linings, you got on one of the best cards of the year. Well, and how disappointing was it for you, Jack, 
that um, you didn't get to fight for the title. Your last fight, it obviously fell through at the last minute and you still got to fight, but not for the belt. How, how was that? Um, I mean, I was, I was a little bit, I suppose, pissed off for about 20 minutes. But then as soon as, soon as they, they, you know, the, the, main, the main thing I was worried about was not getting to fight in front of all, all the Welsh fans, you know. It was being labelled the the biggest the biggest night in Welsh MMA history, and I thought it, it you know for me not to fight on that card, I think it would have took away from the night a little bit. So don't you know I was devastated that it wasn't a title fight. Obviously, I had my mindset on that for ten weeks before, but yeah. I got the fight. I mean, and that was the main thing to 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 put to have all the training and the weight cut and everything else to not be able to fight. Then at the end, that would have would have been heartbreaking. And you know, I I knew I'd get a, I'd get a win and get a title fight. You know, the next fight after anyway. So. Like I, I said, it, it, to take a last minute fight, you know, and take that yeah. It, it, I was always I said to Graham, you know, they, they called me and said um, that Omar was out. Um, obviously not his fault. Some something to do with his brain scan. Um, some something on there came up. So you know, I couldn't be really annoyed at him. And anyway, I just said to Graham, just get someone in. It doesn't matter who or what weight. Just get someone in because I I, I want to fight tomorrow night. And I you know I've sold all these tickets. I've all these people come to watch. I want to put a show on for them. And thankfully, I was able to do that. You know. Yeah. No, it's, um, it was it was sign of a true fighter, I think, to just want to carry on putting on a show for the fans and just accept a fight with anyone. I hear that you were like ready to take on anyone who threw their name into the hat. Yeah, I think we had uh, some some like three or four names throughout the day. You know, throughout the way and day was was thrown at the mix. Um, Brian Bouland was one of them. He got offered the fight. He, he didn't want to. He didn't want to know. Um, uh, so Grayson as well was offered the fight, but something came up there um, with the weight or something like that. There was another yeah. European guy that got offered the fight, uh, but then obviously they ended up um, with safe. MMA. I mean, on short notice like that, it's tough to get some someone in with the safe MMA p- procedure. You know, yeah. you've got to be clear at the fight. It is it's always going to be hard. So thankfully they got Wesley Meyer in, and um, big respect to him for for jumping in. You know, on a day's notice as well. You know, it, without yeah. him, I wouldn't have got to perform. So big shout out to him as well. And what's it like for you to see so much Welsh talent coming through at the moment? Like, just Wales seems to be on fire on the fight scene. Yeah, it's it's definitely booming now in Wales, especially since Brett and Jack and, and, and John Phillips have all sort of made their mark in the UFC. I always say it, you know, we've always had the talent there, but for a long time it was, you know, is there ever going to be a Welsh guy in there? Because it, for, for whatever reason, the UFC just didn't seem to, to come calling. You know, Brett was at the top of his game, at the top of his division for for years before they come calling him. Same with Jack. So, but you know, as soon as them two made the break, and then obviously John about a year or so after, I think it showed to to us up and comers that that big stage is now we can we can get in there, and they are interested in us Welsh guys. And now since that, it's obviously just gone through the roof. The, the level of some of the Welsh amateurs coming through as well is is frightening. So next couple of years is going to be big for 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 anyone coming out to Wales. I'm sure. And, and previously, the, the biggest uh, Cage Warriors cards have all been in London, but more recently, the, the bigger ones have been in Wales. Like That must be amazing for you to have the hometown support as well. Yeah, it's, like I said, you know, to, to fight for a world title anyway is a big deal, but to be able to do it in your, in your, your own backyard with, with an arena full of people screaming and cheering for you, it, it, it just, it's just the icing on the cake. And I'm looking forward to, to doing it again on December the 8th. You know, it was amazing last time, and I'm sure it's... It's going to be even better this time. Cool. And you know, I, I gotta say, whenever I watch a fight card uh, over in Europe, it's uh, it, really anywhere over there. You, the fans really turn out for uh, the fights, and and the energy level is insane. Uh, it's really great to see that. So I think that'll be really awesome for you. And uh, again, congratulations on that. And that's going to be what? What is that fight card? Uh, December the eighth is five weeks on Saturday, so it'll uh, it'll soon be you. It's, uh, it's flying around. How has your weight cut been going in uh, your fight camp? Because you know, I, with there's so much controversy out there with that, and uh, you know, fighters missing weight all the time. Whether it be just uh, you know run of the mill, you know, weight cutting problems, sodium dump. There's so many things that could happen. How's your fight camp and your weight cutting been? So well, your weight cutting doesn't start for a little bit, but how's your fight camp been so far? Yeah, it's been really good. Um, obviously, I fought on the the twenty ninth of September, so we pretty much had a couple of days off and just rolled straight through into another camp. Um, but I'm always fit and in shape. Anyway, I'm not someone who takes weeks or months at a time out of the gym. I always stay in the gym. Even I was injured earlier on this year, but I still kept active. You know, kept training. And 
you know, I'm fit all year round, but I, I genuinely believe I got one of the best camps in Europe, if not the world. So it's great to have all these these guys around. I'm, I'm surrounded by a lot of you know seasoned pros, but but good tough amateur boys coming through as well, who, who I think we'll see make their mark on on the pro scene now in the next year or two. So the gym's buzzing, you know, the coaches the coaches are on top of the game, and and everything's coming together nicely. It's um, it's all starting to click nicely now, and. You know, December the eighth, you're gonna get you're gonna get to see the best me there is to offer, and you know people say that for every fight, but uh, so it does sound cliche, but it, it is the truth. You know, everything's gone brilliantly so far, so hopefully it continues our way now next five weeks. And what's it like being coached by family? I mean, I guess you don't know any different, but is it is it is it? Any yeah, different? no, I mean. It's hard for me to say because I don't, I don't, like you said, I don't know any different. He's, my dad's yeah. always been my, my head coach. Obviously, I, I got other coaches as well, as well like uh, Carl Parker is my wrestling coach, Gary Lockett, my boxing coach, uh, Greg Carlo, big GC. He does my, my strength conditioning and my nutrition. So, But it, it, I find there's an advantage, to be honest. Cause I, I'm with, I live with my dad, you know, so 24-7 he's on my case. I can't slack off on the gym. I can't slack on the diet because he's going to see it and... And give me a kick up the ass if I need it. So, um, what do you it, do it, when it, you're pissed it, off at him now? <laughs> I just lock myself in my room. I think. <laughs> like if I if I start mouthing him off, you probably make me do more 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 training or longer training <laughs> sessions. So, uh, but no, it's definitely an advantage I find, and and where we know each other so well, you know, I got hundred percent faith that that when I'm in the cage, if he's calling for me to do something, it's for my best interest. You know, so yeah, yeah it's it's definitely an advantage. That's how I see it. Anyway, some people may disagree, but obviously each to their own. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I would love to get your opinion on some MMA news, Jack, that there's there's a lot of stuff going on out there. You have uh, uh, big, you know, news of the last couple of weeks, Demetrius Johnson being traded uh, to one FC with uh, Ben Askren getting traded to the UFC. What do you think about that? Uh, well, to be honest, I'm I'm sort of glad for Mike Mouse in a way, because I think as good as he is, in the UFC, I don't think they they marketed him very well. They they didn't give him his his just deserves, if you know what I mean. I think they they just used him as a bit of a card filler. And I think over at One FC, I think he'll become the poster boy now. And and you know I think they'll they'll pay him good money over there. So I think it's a good career move for him. And and you know Ben Askren coming over as well is um that's that's big as well because he's not the most exciting guy to watch. But if he can enforce his game, there's not many in that division. I don't I don't think that'll beat him. So. I'm looking forward to seeing how that one plays out as well. Will they match him against first? I know there was there was some talk of Khabib, and then there was talk of GSP, and and then there was talk of the D, him fighting the Diazes. So there's a lot of fun fights there for him as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing how, how it plays out. And and Eddie Alvarez as well. It's, um, I'm looking forward to seeing them guy. You know, him and Mikey Mouse going to to one FC. I I never really watched much of that promotion. So but now them two are over there. I think you'll you'll get a lot more eyes on it, and it's good. You know, the more. <laughs> The more big shows you go about, I think the better for us fighters. It's, it makes the, you know, it makes people always talk about stuff like fighters pay, but for us to, you know, for us to get paid more, we need more bigger promotions. And, you know, people like Bellator and 1FC now, they, they're sort of catching up with the UFC a little bit. So I think it's, it's good for the game that they've done a little trade like that. And I think you'll see a lot more of it now in the coming years. Do you think they'll get rid of the 125 pound division? I hope Amen. not. It's. it's it's tough to say because obviously Mighty Mouse was the only one. I mean, Cejudo's probably going to fight Dillashaw now. And then after that, I mean, yeah. there's not many fights to really make. But mm. hopefully they keep it running. You know, even if they don't fly as much time into it as they have done over the last couple of years, it'd be a shame to see them just, just pack it in all together. Yeah. I think if he moves up to 135 to fight Dillashaw, though, they might see it as the perfect timing to close mm. the division. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed they make Dillashaw come down. So, uh you know, now either way, then there's uh, there's a couple of ma interesting matches that you can make, but uh, yeah. obviously without Mighty Mouse, it is tough to um to see much of a future for it. But hopefully, it don't happen. I'd like to see it, you know, continue. I enjoy watching the flyweights, but it's all it's all money making now for the UFC. If they don't draw the views in, then they might just say, Do you know what, let's let's pack it in. Yeah. It's true. It's true. That seems like the end that they've been going for the last couple of years, that if uh, it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. And I understand that from a business standpoint, but from, you know, up and coming fighters that, you know, you have like what top four, three or four big promotions. Um, so who doesn't want to be able to fight and have a contract in that promotion? I mean, it's bad enough. Bellator doesn't have a 125 division for guys. So it's like, uh, I get that. It's I, I definitely would like to see them keep it. 
Um, and I'd like to see a couple more added. I mean, I think that could help a big problem with the weight cutting. I'd also like to see them add an atom weight division for, for women. So there's a lot. Um, I think it would be foolish of them, but we'll see what happens in the next couple months. I actually think um, one FC, given where it is and that guys are smaller generally from from uh, culturally, True. it might be a stronger division. In yeah, well, because they do. They do the no weight cutting as well, don't they, with the 1F? So you have sort of the yeah, hydration right. test and everything. So I think, yeah, you might be right. There might be the, the, the flyweights out there may well be more competitive because they're not torturing yourself to make the weight. So I, like you yeah. said, that, that's, that's a good shout. It might, it might be a case that, he, that he'll have tougher challenges over there than he did in the UFC, so, which hopefully we get to see. Yeah, definitely. And with that trade, I mean, honestly, I, I don't think that's, I think that's one of the first trades I've ever seen in MMA. So maybe that's a sign of things to come, which uh, could be really great, you know, especially again for upcoming fighters and for even fighters that, you know, maybe uh, kind of feel their time has come with that, you know, with that promotion onto the next. And if there's that ability to be traded, why not? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And Katie, you had mentioned earlier some other uh, MMA news that I didn't see, and I've been trying to find it, and I still can't find it. It's more of a what could be going on in the next uh, near future. What did you hear today? Uh, um, somebody sent it to me on on one of my groups, um, and sorry that I can't remember the name of the person who sent it to me. It was just right. a, Khabib talking about um, how he will not attend any court hearings in Vegas if he's summoned. Um, even if it means that he's banned for the next 10 years, even if they take all his money off him, he is refusing because he is not guilty of anything they say he's done. So, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, I said earlier, I think it would be really foolish of him not to go. Um, I'd be really upset to see him not fight again. Uh, and I don't see them handing down as harsh of a punishment as they said in the beginning, personal opinion. Um, what do you think, Jack? Yeah, I mean, it's a tough one, obviously. It would be stupid for him not to, to go to the court urines or whatever because, you know, ultimately that means he's not going to fight again. But in the same hand, you can't use McGregor, you know, throwing dollies and smashing up buses as a part of the promo for the fight. And then, and then, com- and then, and then, call Khabib scum of the earth when he reacts how he does afterwards you know and I know it's all it, it, it's all promo obviously with McGregor he's brilliant at what he does that's why he's made so much money but you know them, them Russians are a different breed you know he obviously took things personal when he's speaking about his religion and mm-hmm. and his father and stuff you know and you know he just snapped and he, he, he that's just how he reacted and it was it was something that was one great to see but it again that draws in fans as well I know as bad as it was like just like McGregor's trash or stuff like that after the fight, people are gonna you know people look at that could be could be now and think he's a bit of a wild card or look how many people hate him now. So next time he fights, there's gonna be just as many people tuning in, hoping that he has a a tune in, than then you know then people tune in to watch him win. But to be honest, I think he's got UFC by the balls a bit because he just he yeah. just beat McGregor, they, they cash they cash cow. So mm-hmm. for them to just get rid of him now, it, it doesn't. I mean. Does, it doesn't legitimise McGregor if they could bring McGregor back now he could win the belt if they if they strip Khabib or whatever but he's always going to have it lingering over his head he's got to beat Khabib to, to solidify himself so yeah. I mean we'll see what happens Ho- hopefully I don't think like you said it won't be as, as bad a punishment as they first said I think it'll just be a fine and a, and a couple of month ban and hopefully that's the case and, and we get to see him fight you know next year because it, it'd be a shame to see him not fight again because in my opinion he's the best in the world Probably the best pound for pound as well, if you want my honest opinion. But yeah. we'll we'll see, I, I suppose. But I like I said, you know, if he gets banned in, the, in in America, I'm sure some big Russian promotion will pick him up anyway. You know, they, absolutely. We'll see him fight again. I think no matter whether it be in the UFC or somewhere in Russia. Yeah. I agree with that, and I actually agree with your opinion uh, in spades. <laughs> uh, anybody that's watched my, my social media, I've been super opinionated about, uh, about it, and uh, I definitely definitely agree with that. You know, when, when you, uh, what is it, you don't want to poke a sleeping bear or whatever they say. Yeah, that was just, you know, I mean, you can't sell a fight on one man's prejudice and one man's, a lot of people, oh, it's not prejudice, it's not this. It was, um, and regardless if, 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 Connor meant it or not, that's what they used 
um, all that rhetoric and the, the footage to sell this fight. And what do you expect? You know, I mean, you got two guys that are in there, their adrenaline's pumping, you know, you have teams outside of the cage talking shit. It's just, it's just, I didn't expect any. I, I, I don't know. Wasn't Connor, Connor's got a problem with it either. I think, you know, Connor didn't want to press charges. Connor and Coach Cav have both come out and said they don't want him to get banned. If Connor wants the rematch at any stage, he's got, to, yeah. Khabib's got to be fighting. So I just, I, I don't think, you know, chat shit, get banged. Connor probably yeah. knows. If he, yeah. if he got under his skin enough, he was hoping that side of Khabib would come out in the fight and make him fight emotionally. And it didn't. Oh, he yeah. Waited until he beat him and then he just exploded. And you can only push a man so far. Yeah. And I think the thing with Khabib is such a man of honour. I, know. I can't see him backtracking on this statement. So hopefully and to be honest, he doesn't need to be in Vegas. What could be then wasn't that bad. I mean, it was, don't be wrong. No. Why is, you know, Connor did the same thing at a fight night when his he fought, uh, I can't remember his name. Yeah, um, in Bellator, wasn't it? Um, when Charlie Ward. No, fought, not even that. He, when he fought, um, oh, why can't oh, I Aldo, think? Oh, yeah, when he fought Dennis Siva. Yes, oh, and he yeah. jumped out at Aldo, and everybody's like, oh, yeah. but he didn't jump out to fight him. He still jumped out of the cage, yeah. and there were kids right there. You could see them. They're on camera. So it's like, it's just apples to oranges, and it's and silly I don't for think what, to make a big deal. What Khabib done wasn't that bad. No. Don't be wrong, I disagree with his teammates jumping in and, and taking slice oh, yeah, that, that, was, that was wrong. But what Khabib actually done, you know, he shouldn't have jumped the cage, but it, it all got broke up, and it was, it was the stuff that happened inside. And I think... That's probably what, what Connor and, and Carvin are looking at. You know, they're thinking it wasn't him, you know, throwing slice yeah. shots. It was, it was the other guys. And, um, or, you know, they, they should definitely have a, have a worse punishment than Khabib, in my opinion. You know, he jumped mm. the cage, but he didn't really, he didn't punch no one on the sly. He wasn't anywhere where he wasn't supposed to be. So it's, it's the other guys, I think, that caused more of the trouble and, and more of the, the madness than actually Absolutely. what Khabib did. Yeah. Absolutely. And I really, really, really wish I was a little fly in that spot to really hear what Artem said to him because, oh no, Dylan Danis, sorry, Dylan Danis said to him. Because a lot of people are saying that were around, he said nothing. And then there's people that are saying he called Khabib a uh, Russian uh, Muslim rat. And I mean, honestly, after I had a performance like that, if that was me, I can't say that I wouldn't want to go and knock the guy's head <laughs> off either. So, you know, he just creamed his teammate and then. You know, you got Dylan Dan is talking shit who's not even in the UFC, but that's, you know, besides the point. <laughs> well, Dylan thinks he's a um, better version of Khabib, so yeah. there you uh, go. Yeah. Get a grip. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. It's like, you know, go get signed by the UFC and then we'll talk, Dylan. <laughs> uh, but, uh, we, uh, you know, I know you got about seven minutes left, Jack. So what do you think about the fight card this weekend coming up? It's pretty big. UFC 230 at Madison Square Garden. Um you know, we have a lot of Chris Weidman. Everybody's really excited to see him back. I know that. Um, that's pretty much what the big talk is right now. What do you? What do you? Uh, what do you see happening in this in this fight card? Yeah, it's massive. Um, well, my, my teammate uh, Jack Marshman is on the main card as well, so you know, really excited for him to, to get the fight oh, on a big card like that. My my father mm -hmm. and my other coach Carl are out there with him now, so great experience for for Jack and for the team. You know, it it brings a lot of eyes on us and. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing him perform and to get the fight on the main card as well is a big deal for him as well. He's in the gym. But yeah, it's a massive card. Um, Weidman and Jack raise a good fight. I've always been a big Weidman fan, so I'm looking forward. Hopefully, he can get a win and, and put himself back in uh, title contention. And then the main event as well. It's uh, it's everything you want in the fight. You know, every, everyone's expecting DC to go out there and maul him, but you know, with a with a black beast, he only needs that one shot. And as long as that fight's going on, you're going to be on the edge of your seat. You know, um, <laughs> waiting for him to. To land our bomb, but uh, the old card stat, I'm just looking forward to watching. You know, obviously, mainly I'll be nervous on Saturday night supporting Jack, and I get more, more nervous supporting the boys, and, and I do fight him myself. But you know, um, I, I'm sure he's going to get a win and perform, and, and then I can just relax and enjoy the rest of the card. Then, but uh, it, it's massive, and I can't wait for it. It's one of the biggest cards of the year, definitely. Jack, yeah. to be honest, how devastated are you that Eubanks Shevchenko was snatched from us for the main event? <laughs> I didn't even I don't even know that girl who uh, who was fighting Chef <laughs> Chen or so I'm uh, I'm glad you haven't been watching tough <laughs> no I I didn't watch that series but I'm glad um I'm glad DC and the Beast stepped up and, and you know I'm, I'm pulling a tight that's a good main event for for Can't any wait. cards so, so I know they haven't had long to train for it but I think that makes it a little bit more interesting you know so um 
Oh, hopefully that fight uh, delivers as well. I'm sure it will. It's a shame that Diaz and Dustin fell out of that crowd mm. as well. Yeah, my dad's devastated. He said the one he's out. He said the one person he was gonna fan boy would have been uh, Nate Diaz, but he said he's getting <laughs> he's off the card, and uh, I can't imagine he's gonna be cutting about at the show anyway. So that maybe some other time. Selfie. <laughs> yeah, I said that. I said if you mount maybe I should get a selfie with Diaz. <laughs> if he does selfie, you don't look the type who'd uh, react too kindly to someone asking for a photo. But you don't ask. You, you know what get. he does? He does. I've does seen he? him at fights. Yeah, I saw him at uh, the last World Series of Fighting card. It was two New Year's Eves ago. Not last one, but the one before. Yeah, it was two New Year's Eves ago. He was there. I know that sounds so weird the way I said it. He was there um, cornering Jake Shields. Uh, it was Nate. Nick uh, Nick wasn't there. Nate was there. Uh, and a couple other people. Nick might have been there. I don't remember. But um no, Nate was just walking around taking pictures with anybody that wanted them. Uh, the media were all getting up. I was the only one that didn't because I didn't want to be, you know, embarrass myself. We're not supposed to do that. It says it on the back of the card. Um, but yeah, no, he was just more than willing. He was really cool. Yeah, he's, you know, I, I love I love the Diaz. It's mainly because they, I think, they're true to themselves. Is what, yeah. what they do. They don't they don't prone and act. They are who they are, and that's what I can relate to. You know, I don't. There's nothing worse than seeing interviews of fighters and you can see they put on an act or they try to act the mm. tough guy or they they try to act the trash talk guy or they they try to act the nice guy and sometimes you can see his force or with them it's it's nice to see that they've stayed true to themselves and I I can't imagine in fairness that he is uh, that he is a decent guy so you know I I don't know I just didn't think he'd be up for again? a selfie what's that sorry do you see either of the Diaz brothers fighting I, again I don't see Nick fighting I think uh, I think he's had too long out now and I think. The money he's gonna to want to come back, I just don't see him paying him. Yeah. I think, but I I can see Nate fighting again soon. I, you know, now now Con have lost. I can see him doing a a third fight. You know, middle of next year. That's that's a big money fight. Even though, uh, they are, you know Nate and fought for two years and and Con's coming off like lost the the trilogy thing. I'll still draw a lot of views in. So I'd like to see that as well. But I'd like to see Nate fight a lot of the top guy. I'd like to see him, see him fight Tony Ferguson, mm-hmm. obviously Poirier, Pettis. There's a, there's a lot of good fights in our division, and if they do the one the one sixty five division like they're talking about, then that That'd mixes it up even more. So o- hopefully we see him back next year. You know, I act- oh sorry, Katie, what were you sorry. saying? I said I would love Tony to get the Khabib fight. Sorry, go on, you go, Kerry. Oh, I would love to see Khabib with Tony fight. I think that would be fantastic. I actually said, I I've said it on a couple of shows uh, that if. With the Connor and Khabib fight, I was literally said that if uh, Connor loses, uh, I definitely see him fighting uh, Nate Diaz with the trilogy. And it was actually my lead up was that if uh, Nate lost to Dustin, that that would be the perfect, you know, uh, Dustin mm-hmm. fight Khabib, Nate fight Connor. And so the saga continues, um, which I definitely do see them making a third. It, it's going to, people are going to watch it no matter what. Um, that money, that fight's just money. It has money written all over it. Uh, and, and and actually, I heard rumors of possibly Khabib and GSP fighting at 165. Yeah, I mean, I seen GSP. There was talk of him doing a test cut as well at the 155. I, I heard him mm-hmm. on a podcast. Um, I can't remember if it was Joe Rogan or another one. He said that he would like to go for a third belt. So if he could make lightweight as well, him and Khabib, that's a massive fight. One that everyone would like to see, I'm sure. So, you know, the the amount of... The amount of fights, the quality of fights we're going to get to see now next couple of years is going to be through the roof, I think. There's a lot of super fights to be made. And uh, now, oh, yeah. now, now UFC seemed to be, you know, before it was it was more about, you know, the division and, and keeping the division running. Whereas now they start to be going on the super fight route, which is um, which they is good for us. They need to make a belt for it. <laughs> they yeah, need to make a super fight belt and call it a day so nobody else got just feelings. <laughs> Think about that. If they made a whole belt for it, then you don't have to have a, uh, an entire division on hold. It just, to me, makes a lot of sense. But I'm not one of those uh, higher ups over there. So, <laughs> you know, it's not up to me, unfortunately. Uh, and Jack, you have about a minute left before you have to go. Uh, do you want to tell everybody where they can find you on social media? Uh, yeah, just uh, Jack Show MMA on Instagram and Twitter and Jack Tank Show on Facebook uh, and uh, that, that's that's about it. Also, uh, just quick shout out to all my my teammates, my my coaches, and my sponsors as well for uh, for their ongoing support. And um, I think there's still tickets available for for my fight December the eighth. So um, get at me online or on the Cage Warriors website if you want to come watch uh, the biggest night in Cage Warriors history. 
We're stay fit and healthy, Jack, because I'm so looking forward to this diet. <laughs> and I do wish you the best of luck because, um, yeah, I just want to see a fantastic uh, fight on the night. And I promise I'll go back to being a Jack Tank Shaw fan after this. Uh, I'll have your T-shirt ready for after the fight. Don't worry about that. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. No problem. Yes, Thanks thank for, you having for coming me. on with us, Jack. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. I'll see you soon. You got it. All right, Katie. So let's break Good down night. some of the Good rest night. of this card this weekend. It's got a lot of great fights on it. Um, and I think that we covered pretty much all the MMA news that's been in the uh in the works, at least at, at least from what I saw, but we can always pull up another story. Um Let's go with the, I mean, do you want to start with the main card or do you want to start with the undercard? Oh, I don't mind. You pick. I'm easy. All right. Let's, you know what? Let's start with the undercard and do a lead up. Um, the first fight that's going to be on Fight Pass is Adam. Oh, great. I can't pronounce his last name. <laughs> with Doric. Definitely never going to be able to pronounce that. Well. What? I said I should get the card up as well. So I <laughs> Um, fighting against Marcos uh, Rogerio de Lima. Uh, you know what? I'm not familiar with either of these guys. I got to be honest. I'm not going to, I would never lie about that and say, oh, I know. Blah, blah. But uh, just on, let's look at their stats because that's always going to be a good tell. I would def, oh, yeah, I'm going to definitely, well, I don't know. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to go with Marcos. His stats would well, say that he's going to win. I don't, I don't know any of the guys on the um on the early prelims um on the on the FS1 prelims that Eubanks Modafferi fight that was obviously Eubanks was going to be headlining at one stage fighting yes. Shevchenko yes so I'm assuming that this Eubanks Modafferi fight is for the number one contender spot because then Joanna Jacek is going to mm -hmm. fight Shevchenko. On the same night that um, Jack's fighting, actually December yes. eighth, so that that should be a, a good fight in the in the women's uh, flyweight the flyweight division. Yeah, yeah, it it should be a really great fight. Uh, you know, and a lot of people were really excited about Roxanne uh, Madoffrey on this on the uh, flyweight division of the Ultimate Fighter. Um, she's had such a great history in MMA. Um, I'll, you know, a lot of people now know who Sajara is, not just because of what Joe Rogan said, uh, but I know she's been, you know, very vocal about how excited she is that if she wins, she's going to start talking shit to Joe Rogan. So that should be a really great post fight interview. Um, may even end up being better than Derek Lewis's. We'll see. We'll see. Well, I think Roxanne said she's going to, um, call out as well. If it call out for the title, if she wins. So maybe whoever wins that fight. Joe Rogan's going to get it. <laughs> an earful? Sorry. He'll get an earful from. I yeah. just want to talk really fast. I do actually know a, quite a few people that are fighting on that undercard, on the yeah. Fight Pass card. Um, really quick, uh, uh, Brian Kelleher is a friend of mine. He's fighting uh, Montel Jackson. Brian's awesome. He fights out in New York, Long Island. Uh, I've interviewed him. Really great guy. Uh, he's fought some, some some really fantastic fighters, um, and you know he's had a you know a loss or two, but he's he's a really he's he's a fantastic fighter in the one thirty five division, and definitely a come up. I could see him uh, doing really well. But I'm really excited about my friend Shane Burgos. He's uh, only got one loss inside of the UFC, and that was his last fight, um, which you know nobody wants to have. So I could see him being uh, ready to tear shit up uh saturday night matt frivola uh super talented he was coming off of the contender series one loss inside the ufc oh, but yeah. he was from the contender series and he's fighting lando venato who's super talented and uh lehman good fighting ben saunders and that i think caps off the early prelims and uh i think lehman's gonna take that one lyman how do you pronounce his name <laughs> <laughs> but going into the main card which i know everybody's like super duper excited about um I don't know if I don't have the the full site pulled up, so I'm not sure if Jason Knight's fight is on the main card or on the prelims. But he is a really fantastic fighter. He always brings a huge, huge performance with him. It's usually a you know a battle. So I'm just really excited to see him in that cage again. Yeah. Have, have you watched his fights? 
Yeah, yeah, I have actually. Um, he's he's good on the ground as well, right? So yeah, yeah, be interesting to see him. I think I think he lost the last fight that I watched. I don't know if he's fought since then, but um, yeah, be interesting to see what he's bringing to the table. Yeah, I think he did lose his last one, but he's just always, every time he's in a fight, either even if he loses, it's just a brawl. It's a great fight. Yeah. Uh, I love Derek Brunson. I'm so excited to see him fighting. Uh, I can't pronounce uh, Israel. Um, Adesanya. There you go, girl. Uh, that should be a really exciting fight. Um, okay. I'm really I think in general. I do. I think it's going to be really good. I want to see Derek win, but I'm kind of thinking Israel's going to get it done. I d yeah, it's a really tough one to call because I think um, Brunson's annoyed with giving people too much respect in the past. Yeah. Um, and Adesanya, he's just like storming through everybody. I was actually really lucky enough to be at the tough finale where he um, fought um, Brad Tavares and he put on such an impressive performance. So... Mm. Uh, it's hard to see him losing, but I know. I, I don't know. It's, it's that's a tough one. I know. I think it's going to be a fun one to watch for that reason alone. And then you got Jack Marshman fighting Carl Robertson. Uh, I'm going to just give the nod to Jack because uh, because we just had Jack, that's Jack Shore's teammate, correct? Yeah, he's Jack Shore's teammate. He, he yeah, I'm going to give him the nod case, case just because. Period. So um, he's he's a great guy. Great. Um, MMA fighter. I'm super excited to see him back in the cage and I really hope he gets the win. He's a great record. I mean, he's like 22 7 and 0 is, is pretty good. And, you know, yeah. Carl's got one loss. So, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't really boil down one or seven losses to anybody, but experience is always a huge, uh, huge key factor, at least for me. Some, and I mean, I've seen it go the other way too, but that should be, that should be a fun fight to watch. Yeah, I do, I'm really rooting for Jack Marshman in that one. That'll be, yeah, I'm definitely going to root for him as well. Uh, just half reason because we had Jack on before. Uh, <laughs> uh, David Branch fighting Jared uh, Cannonier. Um, yeah. David Branch is a World Series of Fighting uh, uh, alumni, if you will. Um, I saw his last fight in World Series of Fighting. He's super talented. Uh, he... He had a lot of noise behind him when he first signed with the UFC. Yeah. Uh, I like Branch. I, oh, dude, he's a cannoneer. He's huge. Yeah, he is. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He, that's a big, that's it's going to be a big uh, undertaking for him, in my personal opinion. I mean, he did, he had, you know, a, a win, a loss, a win, and a loss. Um. So we could, you know, that could go really. I got it saying Cannoneer, I think. Um, yeah. The, I know um, Branch had a lot of backlash when he tapped to strikes when he was fighting. Yeah. Hot cold. Um, a lot of people questioned his heart, and I, I don't know. Like you say, Cannoneer is a a big dude, and I'm just yeah. wondering how mentally strong Branch is, and I'm just, right. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I I think I give the nod to Cannoneer in this one. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Multiple reasons, not even just to, because of uh, you know the the tap due to strikes, but he's a big dude. Like, yeah, I could see a possible matchup between him and the Beast one day. Um, who isn't excited to see Chris Weidman back? Uh, it's been a while since we've seen him in the cage. I'm gonna look at at the last time, which I think might have been two years ago. I could be wrong on the date. I think it's Let's... when he beat Gastelum, wasn't it? He injured himself. Yeah, he beat Gastelum and that was oh, oh yeah, a year and a half ago, 2017, uh July twenty second. Yeah, it was a minute ago, you know, and, and you know, a lot of people will say, Do you think he has ring rust? Nah, I don't think so. I don't think that's gonna be a case at all. I am um, the rock cold matchup fell out though. Um I'm you know, I'm, I'm excited to see him fight Jack Array, but it would have been great to see him fight Rock Hold again. I was super excited for that. Um, I actually, I definitely had him beating Rock Hold. Not that I don't think that he can beat Jacare, because I definitely think he can. I think he might even be just a touch more well-rounded. Well mm -hmm. um, and I think if he uses his wrestling uh, and grapples, I think that that might win him the fight. Um I mean, Jack is a, a, a jiu-jitsu as well. Um, yeah, that's so what I'm saying. I think if he, 
Jacare being able to submit him. So, um, yeah, I, I give the nod to Weidman in that one for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I'm gonna give the nod to Weidman, and I, I'm, I'm, I, I hope you know when they both beat. No, no, Kelvin beat him. The Kelvin beat uh, Jacare. That's right. Uh, in their last fight, so you know, yeah. you never know. It could. This could be it. Could be fight of the night. It could end up being a bigger fight than the main event. Um, I don't know if that'll be the case because the main event is just insane. Uh, we have Derek Lewis coming off of his last fight, which was just bananas. I thought it was a fantastic fight for him. Uh, he beat Alexander Volkov, and that was not that was. A couple of weeks ago. So what do you think about him fighting again so soon? He's obviously not in the best shape I don't like it. cardio wise. Um, I don't like it for him at all. I think big war it's as well that soon. fight. He got hmm? knocked out at the end, but it was a, a war up until that point. So he really went through the mill in, in that fight. Now oh, yeah. a five round fight. Straight after in his post fight interview he said he wasn't ready for a title shot. He needed to do a lot more cardio. He told me yeah. about Kisping, he's only training like half an hour a day. I don't know. Yeah, 35 minutes a day. I was like, is this guy serious? And I mean, I love, I love him. I think he's me too. an exciting fighter. I think he's funny. He's got personality coming yeah. out of every orifice you could imagine. Um, but I really don't like that they let him fight this soon. I know they wanted to save the card. I know they wanted to have a huge main event. And, you know, after that fight, he made so much noise that, like, they couldn't really help it. And quote, unquote, uh, he said that the UFC threw money at him like a hooker. So, <laughs> or a stripper. Sorry, might have said stripper. But either way, um, you know, he did say he wasn't ready for a title fight. He he, he looked so tired by the end of that fight. He took his yeah. shorts off because his yeah. balls were hot. I mean, I love the guy, but I don't see him beating DC. I think if I'll he does, it'll be a shock the world kind of thing. Hmm? I'll just see DC outworking him, getting him fired, and then finishing him. Oh, absolutely. I could see it. I I, I think, honestly, it's going to be a TKO. I think that uh, DC is going to take him probably within the second round, maybe third. I, obviously, we saw how he fought his last fight against uh, Volkov that he, he he looked really, really tired. So, yeah, if DC outworks him, I think it'll be a, a nice night for him. And, uh, I mean, after that, I guess it would be, you know, DC fighting John Jones because who knows what's going to happen. When, when is Brock? Supposed to come back with December or January? January, I think. I don't want to see that fight. I don't really. I'm not a fan of Brock Lesnar at all, to be honest. A lot of, it's, I really don't like the guy, um, and I don't like them giving, you know, a guy that's been off for a year and a half, almost two years, give or take, uh, a guy that failed his, his, you know, his last fight. He he po got popped on a failed uh, PED test. You know what I mean? To give him immediate title fight, it's just silly in my personal opinion. But that's what they've done to John Jones as well. I know. But John Jones, you know what? He's it, the difference to, for me is is who John Jones is and was. Yeah. You know what I mean? I kind of feel like, what is Brock going to do? He's not going to fight again in the UFC. Yeah. I don't see him defending the belt if he wins. I think he's just going to go off and go back into the WWE like he did the last time. And to me, that's like, why would you even give him that chance if that's the possibility? Because he's done it so many times already. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I think so it's just my like court feelings on it. <laughs> if anything, yeah, no, I'm pissed about it. Do you think Steve Pace should get a rematch? Oh, Definitely. Definitely. I think that he should have gotten the rematch before Derek Lewis getting uh, the shot. I, I, I think it's foolish. I think it's, I don't think it's right. Um, I don't know what Stipe did or didn't do to not deserve that. Um, I but mean, I think he's, he said that he, tur he turned down having Stipe at MSG because it was too soon. He needed to prepare more for Stipe. And there were a multitude of ways that Stipe could beat him. Whereas with Derek Lewis, it's just watching out for that one punch knockout power. So Derek Lewis was the only person he was prepared to take on that short notice. And you know, I'll be honest with you. I kind of thought that from a while ago that if that wasn't going to be his immediate rebash, there were definitely reasons why and definitely his reasons as to knowing that Stipe's a beast and he's, he's a big threat. Um, yeah. 
So I definitely, and you know what? You got to respect that because you got to respect a guy that knows his game enough to know. But could you imagine if he lost? Could you imagine if Derek Lewis knocks him out? Like, it's going to be crazy. It will be crazy. And it will, it will affect his legacy. So I hope that they're throwing money like a hooker at DC too for taking uh, it. Facts. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 a lot of people don't want to see him fight John Jones again. Uh, at the end of the day, I could see that being a last fight for him. Why not? Uh, at the end of the day, he lost to him twice already. Why not try for a third to win, you know? But uh, to win the first time on the third fight, uh, I don't see that happening. But, you know, the guy, I got to respect his fight plan that he knows, you know, that that was the fight to make on a short minute, you know, short notice call out. That, that was the fight to make for him. And and, and as much as I would have liked to have seen Steve A in there, um, you know, got to respect the champ's decision, right? Do you think it goes any different for DC if he fights John Jones at heavyweight rather than light heavyweight? Um, not really. The only thing that I think could make a difference is that maybe he, you know, like won't definitely won't have to cut as much weight fighting at heavyweight. Um, John Jones. I don't think I don't see it going any different. I really don't. I think that's his almost like his kryptonite right there. I feel like John Jones is just the guy that, you know, he might not be able to beat like Misha Tate and Ronda Rousey. Misha is I don't think I think that if they came back in another two years and did a super fight, which a lot of people would watch that, believe it or not, I think it would end the same way. I think Ronda would armbar her again. Yeah, me too. I agree with you. And I would love to see her come back one day. I mean, both of them, I think that would be a super fight to end all super fights. And I could see it happening. I actually said that like last year. I'm like, I could see them doing that. UFC throwing money at them like hookers and why not? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Why not? But, you know, I'm really, really excited about, I know it's like not for a while, but December 8th, I'm super excited about the women's flyweight uh, division. There's a bunch of fights on that card that are great but i mean i'm excited for the lead up and what's to happen after um yeah. i don't see joanna beating uh valentina valentina's already beat her three times in muay thai fights yeah so if you look at that and look at their history and you look at valentina and uh joanna's fight history in the ufc as a whole valentina comes off as a way more well-rounded fighter she submitted people. She's got a great ground game. She can kind of, you know, in a way, pull a Khabib where she could just, you know, smother yeah. the shit out of you and just literally TKO you on the ground or submit you, whatever she it's wants. Also, it's also not like they're both the same. You know, they'll be, obviously both be flyweights on the scale, but um, Shevchenko's coming down from Bantamweight and Joanna's coming up from Strawweight. So yeah. there'll be the size differential as well. And when you think Rose was able to get a TKO against Joanna, a girl of, uh, who's probably got a lot more power behind her. And don't forget that Rose trained with um, Shevchenko and, and her sister out in Thailand for a long time before her fight with Joanna. Maybe they have the recipe to, to beat in her. I definitely uh, have to agree with you on that. I think that a lot of people don't take all that into consideration. And, you know, there is going to be, there is, there's a size advantage. Uh, Valentina is just bigger than her. Um, mm -hmm. I think in mass more than anything, I mean, Joanna's very lanky and long. And I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way, lanky. She's just, she's long and she's lean. But Valentina is just, I think body I'm mass muscular. is bigger. Hmm? Yeah muscular as well yeah absolutely so i can't see that going in uh um joanna's favor and you know i mean the, the flyweight division is deep you got like caitlin chukagian who's on a big come up you have uh what uh, who was it jessica i that they were talking about that yeah, wanted to yeah i mean she's jessica rose clark I honestly would have given her the shot over joanna but i think everybody really this was the fight to make when Valentina was supposed to fight Amanda Nunes the first time and Amanda Nunes had to pull out because of sinusitis. And Joanna was like very vocal that she would have stepped up on short notice, regardless if it was for the title or not, she was ready to fight anyway. And it wasn't for the title because Amanda had the title. However, um, since that, I think that's why they may be, because people were so interested and so excited about that fight. 
Yeah, definitely. But what what do you see if if Joanna doesn't win that fight? Do you see her dropping back down to strawweight or sticking it out at flyweight? Um, I definitely think she might. Um, yeah, I think she would probably drop back down to strawweight, and I think that she's especially if uh you know I I don't even think is Rose scheduled to fight anytime soon. Um. Because I, I would say that that's what she's going to want to do. Is she's going to want to get that title back. Yeah, I don't think she's next in line, though. No, she she can't be. Yeah. She can't be. I mean, I, I honestly, you know who I'd love to see fight Rose next? Tatiana Suarez. She had a really, she's had actually her last few performances have been great. She's 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 a big 115-er, and I definitely think that uh, I would make that Rose's next title fight, our uh, next title defense, in my personal opinion, is she is she scheduled to fight? I th I think she's injured at the moment. I thought she was. I thought that she had something because I mean it's been a while. Yeah. And she doesn't seem like the type to just stay, you know, stay waiting. She seems like she would be, you know, ready to get back in there. So, yeah. and then you know you have oh gosh that division's so deep. Yeah, I wouldn't give. I would not give uh, Joanna that immediate uh, third <laughs> fight. At all. Yeah. I think it would be silly and foolish. Um, and yeah, I think that's really all the news we have. That's UFC 2. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about before we wrap this up? No, I just wanted to say thank you so much to Jack for coming on. And also shout out to our colleague, Becky, who was sick and yes. couldn't make the show tonight. Um, we've missed you, Becky. <laughs> yes, Becky, next time. And and, and please feel better because we definitely, she's she's awesome. That was a shame. It yeah, happens she though. And the guest for us as well. So I know. So thank you, Becky, that. for that. Yes, and 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 thank you, Jack, for coming on with us. Jack's awesome, and we will definitely have another uh, women's uh, MMA UK women's ladies show, whatever <laughs> women's or ladies. Not sure what we have it under uh, in the next Thanks. few weeks, and we <laughs> will have Becky back with us, our co-pilot, and uh, maybe we'll get a female fighter on with us for that one see if we could get a lady up in here um and yeah I, i'm really excited to see what happens after this weekend and uh tell everybody where they can find you katie um i'm at coppers underscore mma on twitter and on instagram and i'm katie hunter on facebook and give Katie a follow. She does some really great interviews for us over here at MMA UK. Um, and, and you you really are. You're, you're wonderful. And you've done a lot. And you do MMA yourself, which is great. So you can have that conversation with people and actually have an educated conversation. So I appreciate that and love that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for this evening as well, Kerry. Anytime, girlfriend. Anytime. So, guys. Thank you for joining us. This has been a great episode of the MMA UK Ladies Show. And we will be back in a couple weeks. If you guys want to write in to MMA UK, tell us if there's any subjects you want us to cover, any fighters you want us to have on. Uh, you can message us at uh, MMA UK on Facebook. Or you could even, I think, throw a message on here, comment, and uh, Gmail, MMA, is it MMA UK at gmail.com? I think it's we we are, are MMA, MMA UK, UK at gmail.com. Absolutely. And give us a follow, guys, on Facebook at MMA UK, on the internet at MMAUK.net, and on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram here on YouTube. You can follow us at we are MMA UK, and you can find me, Carrie Stellar, pretty much everywhere. And uh, Katie, thank you for a great Thursday night, and uh, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Bye.